want to give you a talk today about grace. I don't think there's anything better to talk about. I want to give us a starting place in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The word says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. That last part, starting with the old, let's read that out loud together. You ready? Let's go. The old has gone. The new is here. Paul is a person that we'll talk about in this message along the way who had a deep, life-changing conversion. And before Paul gets into a talk about how to go from bad to good, he says you've got to hold the conversation about old to new. Old to new because when it comes to grace, it is Jesus not just starting with your behavior, but he starts with the essence of who you are, the very essence, identity, nature. It is not just behavior and and the essence, but it is this life-giving impact. And it starts at such, uh, at that place of the core of who you are, where it's undeniable. Let's think about this. As you drove to church today, you saw the impact of spring. Spring is overtaking, and it's lavish. Grace is Jesus lavishing his love out on us, even when we were sinners. And when you open your heart to God's grace, you experience this life-changing love that takes the old away and makes everything new. We're talking about character. We're talking about nature. We're talking about essence. And it's not just an experience. Three people, and you can celebrate this with me, three people accepted Jesus last night at our Rose District service. Yeah. And that Saturday night experience didn't save them. Jesus saved them. Now, as they go forward in their life, they may refer back to the Saturday night as when it happened. But it's Jesus and a relationship with Jesus that makes the difference. So if you are saved, you probably can look back at that moment, that day, perhaps like you, you remember the detail. But yet you know it wasn't that day that saved you. It wasn't that set of circumstances. It was Jesus and a relationship with Jesus. So I'm not inviting you into an experience today. I'm inviting you into a relationship. Now the experience is awesome. Like the sacred moment where the conviction and the love overwhelm you and you surrender your life to Jesus and realize in the desperate place you're in, he has come to you to where you are and he is bringing that opportunity for love to change you, for power to change you. But it's Jesus and a relationship with him. Paul, who wrote this passage in Corinthians, he hated Jesus. He hated the church. He hated Christians. He lived his life to try and destroy the church and to kill Christians. He was so aggressive in his anti-God attitude. And then he gets saved. And he goes into a whole new attitude toward Jesus, toward people, believers. He then gives the rest of his life to building the church that he once tried to destroy. I mean, he goes from terrorist to evangelist. He becomes writer of almost two-thirds of the New Testament. So this very bad person became a very good person, but before he goes from bad to good, it was old to new. It was a, he was changed in the very essence of his character. He went from spiritual death to spiritual life. It, it is like spring taking over. Think about water and how water flows from the highest place to the lowest, the very lowest. As spring comes, there will be that time where the snow-covered mountain peaks, the highest peaks in Colorado, that snow will start melting, and that water will start running down, and it will find its way 
all the way to the lowest place. It will even change the landscape. So the reason I want to start with old is gone, new has come, it's grace getting to the lowest place. If you feel like life is just, it's like a death-like experience, that's not what God has for you. Spring is here. Grace is here. Let it burst forth in your life by the power of God's love, by the message of grace. Receive it and be changed by it. If you feel like you're at the lowest and there's no hope, grace, like water, goes all the way to the lowest place. It'll change the landscape of your heart and then the landscape of your life. Old to new. But we, we should talk about, you know, outward behavior because it works its way there. And we will look now at some of what Peter wrote. This is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. And this is through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Many of you in the room, you know the gospel. Some of you may not be as aware of this message. And today is a, a message of gaining knowledge. But as you gain that knowledge, you then realize what's available to you and you discover as you get saved that grace comes in abundance. Grace and peace. Paul opened every letter from Romans, Ephesians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Corinthians with grace and peace to you. Grace comes before peace. But this grace is so abundant that it works out in peace with God and the peace of God. Grace is so, so deep that it not only changes you old to new, but in that grace is what it's going to take for you to live the life of grace. And it's in that grace that you have gifts to live in the destiny that God has for you. Grace is salvation. It's conversion. It's the old giving way to the new. But let's keep going until we work it from the inside out. Verse 3, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who's called us by His own glory and goodness. Now, sit up to this challenging, amazing verse. His divine power has given all of us everything we need for a godly life. Now, this is where behavior is going to come under transformation. This is where Paul, such an evil person, is revolutionized. And it's like you don't even uh, believe that he could have been that evil when you see him pinning the Scripture. You see him reaching the lost. You see him saying, I am who I am by the grace of God, and I'm working out of that grace given to me to reach other people. It's hard to believe he was so evil because grace was changing his life. He received in that grace everything he would ever need for the life of godliness he was saved to. So when we get to this point, this is not me trying to get something to you once you're saved the whole focus is to release what's already in you. Because you've been given everything that you need for life and godliness. When you allow this to go to work, Paul wrote about this metaphor, caterpillar to butterfly. That's incredible change. The butterfly is already there. The caterpillar is a butterfly. But there has to be a process. And you go from this rather unsightly kind of crawling thing to a butterfly that's soaring and majestic and awesome. And Paul used that. Remember, he's the guy that's been changed by grace. He used that to describe this divine power that's been given to us. Everything that we need to go from caterpillar to butterfly, to go from like Saul of Tarsus, this evil person, to a person who's revolutionized and walking in the grace of God. There is something here that I pray communicates to, to you because this is where you and I get to take responsibility and we get to own our part of this relationship. We'll add verse 4. 
Through these, meaning the promises of God, He's given us, through His glory and His goodness, these precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. When we get saved, we start a relationship with Jesus. Amen? And the reason I say the experience doesn't save you, it's Jesus and a relationship with Jesus is because this is where you and I come in. You can't do anything to get saved other than surrender. Let me just talk through this basically and clearly. You put your faith, your belief, your trust in His grace. And when you have that belief of heart and you confess with your mouth, Jesus, I need you. I request your forgiveness. I'm desperate for you. Forgive my sins. Your faith in His grace, in that moment, you go from old to new. That's where it goes to work on the essence of who you are. You get new identity, new nature. Saul of Tarsus ends up becoming Paul the Apostle, and the name change there is just to help us realize the dramatic impact, like he's the, he's like, he's still the same person, but he's, he's the new human. He's, he's no longer the man he was. Uh, you will still be you, just the new you. Want to make, let's get that day. You're still you. You're just the new you. The old, that, and over time, old way of thinking, old patterns, Old nature gives way to the new. It's the new you. By simply putting your faith in God's grace, you can do that today. It is the single most important decision you will ever make. It is a life-changing decision. The consequences of that decision mean you enter a relationship with Jesus. You grow in that relationship. Now you can be changed. When you die, when you take your last breath here, you will take your first in the manifest presence of Jesus in a place he has prepared for you called heaven. If you reject Jesus, if you reject this opportunity and this offer and this incredible gift of salvation and a relationship with Jesus, then when you die, you will be eternally separated from Jesus in a place called hell the Bible says is a lake of fire. Eternal torment, where heaven is that eternal presence of Jesus. It's the absolute glory and the best compared to the most horrifying and the worst. So you have an important choice about eternity, but you have an important choice about right now the new you. Jesus has not just come to give salvation so that we go to heaven when we die. He has come to give us salvation so that from the new you becomes the message that's like salt and light to those who still need Jesus because Jesus doesn't want one person to go to hell. Get that. He doesn't want one person to go to hell. It is His will that none would perish. So we want to live so compellingly that people can see a clear message of the love and the power of grace like spring overtaking winter, like water flowing to the lowest level and literally changing the landscape, the grace of God will revolutionize your life in all of the best ways. And you can receive that grace today. You can open up your heart and pray that prayer and you put your faith in His grace and you are saved. Saved. Right there, you come in with responsibility of your part in the relationship. If I want a great marriage, there's a very significant role that I play in that success. If you want to manage your money well, there is a very significant role that you play in that. Nothing, it, all of life works this way. Now, let me talk honestly here with all of us being very aware of the gospel. If you park this choice as just a decision made and you walk away 
and you don't invest in the relationship, you don't take responsibility for the relationship, you will end up saying, where's the change? I'm not a different person. You know, Paul became this awesome lover of Jesus and influencer of people. Well, that hasn't happened to me. That's because you reduced your salvation to an experience, not a relationship. And you weren't saved to an experience. And you weren't saved just to avoid hell and get heaven. You were saved into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you take your part of the responsibility of the relationship. I promise you Jesus will be faithful to his part. And as you take responsibility and you build relationship, watch what happens. The verse says you are participating in, a divine, in the divine nature of Jesus. Now this is how we change. And there is no other way. We, will, we all live in a corrupting world. And the corrupting world through the temptation of Satan tries to ignite evil desires and bring us into a a damaging, destructive life. But if you are growing in your relationship with Jesus, you are encountering the divine nature of Jesus, which then becomes the power you need through the promises of God for the godly life that you're saved to know. Let's keep pressing into that. If you walk out to build a relationship with Jesus then you might leave saying addiction has been the norm for me. And what I'm saying, when you get saved, you are forgiven. When you leave, you may fight the most intense temptation to want to go use whatever it is you're addicted to. But as you walk in this relationship, you are walking with Jesus. You are participating in the divine nature of Jesus and through the promises of God, what happens is the fruit of the Spirit begins to grow. And where there was once no impulse control, where you just responding at the moment the, the desire hit, you find yourself in a new norm of self-control. Where there was once addiction as the norm, now freedom becomes the norm. The caterpillar becomes the butterfly. You may say, uh, I'm so depressed and my thoughts are filled with despair and I just, I don't have any hope. You get saved. You walk out and tomorrow it may be a day of struggle with depression, but what happens is as you take responsibility, your part of it with your relationship with Jesus, joy is going to overtake the depression. And where depression was the norm, joy becomes the norm. The caterpillar becomes a butterfly. You would want to say, I was just so down. Now I'm soaring in a sense of victory where there was like a spirit of despair. I'm now walking and living in a spirit of victory where I never saw the good side of anything. Now I find myself just so hope-filled in my thoughts and in my words. Wait a minute, I have changed. And the change has happened because you are participating in the divine nature through the promises God has given you for the life of godliness that you're saved to know. All the world can do, if you as a human go to another human for help, you're going to get probably at the best coping skills. But no man or woman can change you. No one can get to the root of the issue and, and change you at the foundation of who you are. So you're always dealing with symptoms. You, you do know that addiction is a symptom. And, and the world will try to give you ways to cope with the addiction. Jesus is going to get beneath that. And he's going to get to the foundation of who you are. He's going to get to the root issue and he will bring grace so that their old passes away. That's not who you are. And that's not the behavior you're going to live. And old becomes new. And caterpillar becomes butterfly as joy overtakes 
depression as peace overtakes fear, as faith overtakes uncertainty, as self-control overtakes this lack of commitment, lack of consistency, as love overtakes anger. It is the character and nature. You are participating in the divine nature and you take on Christ likeness. And when you experience that, then you are escaping, walking free from the corruption of this world and all of those evil desires. Oh, this, I pray, let, let, let's add Ezekiel here. Let's go. Verse 26 of chapter 36. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Can you say amen? amen. He will do it. I will remove from, your, from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. That is Ezekiel prophesying the gift of salvation that would come through Jesus. Jesus will save you. No one else can. No one else can take the old and give you a new heart. Jesus can. Can't earn it. Can't be can't pay for it. It's a gift. Now watch what happens. Verse 27. And I'll put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Everybody say, move you. Ready? Say it again. So as I get saved, it's a gift, my faith in his grace. Then I'm going to be honorable with the relationship I'm going to commit myself to gathering like this, to group opportunities because God uses it for discipleship, for personal devotion. We call it the spiritual disciplines. But listen, disciplines, they, they come across as such a have to. Why don't we call it opportunities and wake up not to my daily disciplines, but my daily opportunities to read scripture, to pray. That's my my part in the relationship, and as I do that, because I'm dealing with one who is divine, because I'm dealing with the word that is alive, powerful, and sharper than a double-edged sword that can cut right down between the thought and the intent of my heart. You talk about precision. Talk about the power to change us. And as I whoo, contemplate the glory of God, which is Jesus, through the promise of God in my relationship with Jesus, who is divine, I find myself changing. I find myself growing and thriving and overcoming and living this life. And now watch this. It says, he will move you. He will move you. You have the power of Jesus that's gonna help you live the promise that he's given you. See, it's, it's still not, okay, Ron, here's the word. No, it's participation. It's partic And as I participate in this relationship, he moves me. Growing up, students listen to this, there was a big emphasis on, here's the way it would be preached. You can backslide, you probably will backslide, you're probably backslidden now. Come to the altar. <laughs> and most of the time, the pastor was right. And, and, and Tanya, I spent more time asking God to, you know, bring me back. I slid, slid. Bring me back. And, and I get that. But Isaiah says it like this. And Hosea says this. He will heal your backsliding. Remember Hosea had the unfaithful wife and it was a picture of God and his people? They had the love of God, but the people would walk away and get, and, and get into to corruption. And then Hosea would go and bring her home like God bringing us back. And then she would go out and he would, to the point that he bought her back. Incredible, incredible story there. But listen to this. Along the way, once there, there came this time where God healed her of her backsliding. Yeah. 
And then Paul picks it up in the New Testament and he says, when you contemplate the Lord's glory, which is Jesus, through the scripture, in your relationship with Jesus, watch this, he changes you from glory to glory to glory. Not you backslide, you repent, you backslide, you, no, you get, how about some people that are walking with God today, come on Lawson, that love him more today than a year ago, that know him more than a year ago, that, that, that don't need to repent of backsliding, just need to say, give Lord more, more, I'm yielded, I'm surrendered, I'm walking with you. There's nothing that compares with this. There's nothing that is better than this. From glory to glory, Christ's likeness. Hallelujah. Thank you, G. That's what I'm preaching today. Get saved, then enter the relationship because that's what it is. Salvation deals with the essence of who you are, new nature. But now the caterpillar becomes the butterfly because you've been given, it's all in you. You begin everything you need. But many times we want the, G, the life Jesus has for us without Jesus. And when I want the life Jesus has for me without a relationship with Jesus, then I want the pastor to perform magic. Come to the altar and I'll wave a wand and now you're suddenly a butterfly. No responsibility. And that it's just an experience, it's not a relationship. You got your fire insurance and now you're no longer crawling, you're soaring. And in a consumeristic culture, in a culture that makes us want everything quickly, right now, we must be reminded that we are saved into a relationship and sanctification is immediate. That's a Bible word. Sanctification means old to new happens. Salvation. You are saved and you're as saved as you'll ever be. However, sanctification is also a process. Sanctification being immediate is now I stand reconciled to God because the righteousness of Jesus has been imputed to me. It has been given to me. The one who knew no sin became sin that I might become the righteousness of God. I stand saved by grace. Now, sanctification as a process, ongoing sanctification is where practically joy is overtaking depression and peace is overtaking fear and faith is overtaking uncertainty, and love is overtaking anger, and self-control is overtaking a lack of control, a lack of consistency, and I'm being sanctified because I've set myself apart to my relationship with Jesus, and I'm saying, change me, work, and what happens, put the verse of Ezekiel back up there. Oh, I love this, he will move you. Sanctifying power is Jesus moving you out of your love for him and your surrender to him. He then empowers you to move forward in obedience. To live out the life he saved you to. Springtime. Everywhere you look, Life is bursting forth. There used to be death there. There used to be addiction there. There used to be depression there. Now look, now, and it's not, it's lavish. The decision point as the worship team comes, the first decision point is, have you been saved? And I'm not asking you about organized religion. Do you go to church or... We know that our parents' salvation can't save us. So I'm not asking you about any of those things, like how you were raised. I'm asking you, have you put your faith in His grace? Have you? 
And if you say no, and if you follow that by saying, and I'm so tired of struggling, I'm trying to have this life, like I want nobody addicted, wants addiction. They come to a point where they want freedom. But see, that's the Jesus life. And you can't have the Jesus life without Jesus. Nobody wants depression. But if you want joy to overcome that depression, which anybody would, that's the Jesus life. But you can't have it without Jesus. So when you try to have all of that without Jesus, it's just a a doom loop that you're in. You're just in this cycle of defeat because you're not enough. None of us are enough on our own. You, You can't get enough degrees to figure this out. You can't have enough friends to make this work. You can't party enough to party yourself to fulfillment. You can't. The struggle stops when you surrender to Jesus. And He changes your essence. He changes you from the core of who you are. And then that relationship places in you everything that you need for that life that you want. Stand with me, everybody. Let's close our eyes in His presence. Somebody is standing right now saying, you spoke right to me. I'm struggling. So here's the next decision. And it's the greatest, most important decision that you will ever make. And I I would just really ask that every Christian, why don't you pray in your heart for the people that need to accept Christ today? And let's just be so still in this moment so that no one is distracted from what Jesus is wanting to do in their life. He, He has just made himself known to you again. And you say, Ron, I need to accept Jesus as my Savior. Would you just lift your hand right now? Just begin to lift it. Say, I'm tired of struggling. God bless you. Somebody else? Say, I'm tired of struggling. Just lift it. Lift it high. I'm tired of struggling. Thank you. Thank you. Three hands so far. Someone else, just keep lifting. I'm so tired of the struggle. I know the life that I want, and I understand I can't have the Jesus life without Jesus. You want to accept Jesus? Just lift your hand right now, looking across. Another hand, thank you. Thank you. See, Christians, this is why we pray. This is spiritual warfare right now. But as you see, God is winning the victory. I see a hand in the back. Thank you. Thank you. If you're watching online, I'm looking at you right now saying this message is for you you can respond. Our pastor will serve you just like I'm serving everybody in this room. We will help you. Anyone else say, include me in the prayer. I need Jesus. Some of you have been coming and you've been sitting and listening. Thank you for your hand. I see it. You've been listening. You're around this now. You're around some people that are saved, but honestly, you've never made that choice. You like what you see. You like what you hear, but there's, there's been something that's created a question. No more distraction. All that is is to distract. I want, it, it's time. It's time right now to accept Jesus. It's time for you as a man to make the most important decision you ever make. It's time for you as a lady to make the most important decision. And say, hey, that's me right there. I've been around it, but it's time to cross the line of faith. Would you raise your hand? I know that's got somebody's name on. Who am I talking to today? Say, that's me. That's me. I'm crossing that line of faith today. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray, and I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And you're going to experience God's grace. You say, why, why do we need to repeat this prayer? I'm just wanting to support you. The essence of this is asking Jesus to forgive us and that we desire this relationship with Him and we ask for His love and this relationship to be the leader of our life, to become Savior and like the Lord, the authority, the one who sets the agenda, the one who sets the path. And I know you can do it. But as a support to you, 
Let me help you. Repeat this prayer and every Christian repeating this as an encouragement to now six people who are going to accept Jesus Christ today. Let's pray. Jesus, I open my heart to you. I'm so tired of struggling. I desperately need you. I need your love and grace. I need your mercy and power. So come into my heart. Forgive my sins. I gladly enter this relationship with you. I need you so desperately. Thank you for your love for me. Dying on a cross for me. Rising again so that I could have salvation. I put my faith in your grace. Thank you for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, here's what I want to do. If you prayed that prayer, many of you prayed it because you lifted your hand. Some of you prayed you didn't. If you pray, if you lifted your hand and you prayed the prayer, if you didn't lift your hand but you prayed that prayer, would you lift your hand right now? Come on, just put them up real quick. Come on, put them up. Let us celebrate with you. Right back here. Right here, right here. Back here. Someone else? Thank you. Come on. Hands are going up. I see your hand. Thank you. Say, I prayed that prayer. Come on, church. I prayed that prayer today. Yeah. All right. Can we, can we take a couple more minutes? Because you see God's at work. There are people in the room. You prayed that prayer and you meant it. But you didn't honor the relationship. And there are patterns and challenges in your life. And you, you need to be transformed. And so with your eyes closed, if you say, Pastor Ron, I am going to take responsibility for this relationship so that I can be changed like you've talked about today. I'm going to participate in this relationship because I realize it is the power of transformation. If that is you, just raise your hand right now and say, now you're talking to me. Yes. Someone else? Yes. I see your hand. Yes. 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 Say, I've got to participate. I know what you've talked about. I've been part of this. I prayed it, but I'm just not participating in the relationship. Anybody else? This is, this is significant. This opens you to a future of hope. See, you listen, I want to say over you, you're, you're going to have a new future because there's going to be a new you. You are going from caterpillar to butterfly by the power of this relationship. Anybody else? So Lord, I know that you have had these people in this setting so that they could be reminded that it wasn't an experience that saved them, but a person. And they're coming back to that commitment to you as Savior and Lord. Coming back to that. No more wondering. From this point forward, offering ourselves a living sacrifice which is our reasonable response in light of what you have done and who you are. We give ourselves to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, just affirm that. Heal somebody from backsliding. Is there somebody here you say, Pastor Ryan, you just hit me. I just keep, it's like a revolving door spiritually in my life. I, I keep drifting. I keep wondering. I keep backsliding. And I'm ready for this this cycle to change. If that's you, you lift your hands. Like, now that's me. That's me. You're talking to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Wow. Yes. It's for you. It's for you. I'm going to break that pattern. And instead of backsliding, how about from glory to glory, you're going to be changed. That's the word over you from glory. As you contemplate the glory of God, which is Jesus Christ, as you walk with Him, 
He's going to heal you of your backslide. What a, what a powerful change in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we've had six people saved and many hands go up in that second prayer. Three or four hands right then. I want us to sing, you've been so, so good to me. And I want us to give worship across this place. And this is the time where I hope every hand is in the air in worship and surrender to Jesus. All right? Come on, let's do that as we sing it together.